etc. So, well, thanks very much for for your time this evening and, and, to, and to signing into this uh, to this call. For, for those that don't know me, my name is uh, Brad Matthews from Cricket East. Uh, and before I pass you across to our our kind of two main presenters for the for the evening, I'll just give you a little bit of a, uh, a background onto as to why we've put this this club funding workshop on uh, and why we put it on kind of like now. So one of the questions that that we get constantly from clubs uh, is, you know, what funding streams are available and more specifically kind of what works out there for clubs. So we thought we'd put this on as a way of kind of sharing some information with you uh, and some of it will hopefully, you know, maybe struck a chord and you might look to explore things further. And obviously, traditionally, this is a this is a quiet time of year for for clubs. So, as I said, if there's anything that 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 does pop up that you want to explore further, now is obviously a good chance to kind of put some plans and stuff into place because we all know what it's like once the once the cricket season gets underway, we don't really have much chance to to kind of look into this sort of stuff. So, I'll just introduce you to. Uh, Jonathan Rutland and Grant Simpson from uh, Be Active, which this uh, workshop's been put on in conjunction with from Bedfordshire. They, uh, between them, they both share and both hold a lot of experience and knowledge on not only the sort of funding streams that are available currently, but more to the point for, for you as career clubs, what works for community-based sports clubs. So uh, Jonathan's going to share a couple of very interesting uh, funds that will hopefully uh, spark your interest. I will talk a little bit about ECB options and the shape of the ECB County Grant and Graham will kind of wrap things up with more generic wider uh, f uh, funding streams that are out there both at Bedfordshire and in Huntingdonshire uh, that again have proven successful for 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 career clubs in the past. So hopefully you'll you'll take something from the evening. Uh, if you've got any questions uh, feel free to put them into the into the chat box, but we will be taking some questions at the end uh, in around, I don't know, 45 minutes or an hour or so. OK, Jonathan, I, I, over to you. Thanks, Brad. And hopefully you can see the presentation uh, with the way that Teams works. Unfortunately, I can only now see Brad. Uh, so if you've got any questions, use the chat function and uh, we'll, we'll try and answer those either during kind of this next kind of half hour or so or, or at the end. Um, so just very quickly, uh, myself and Graham are from an organisation called Be Active. Uh, you may have known us previously as Team Beds and Luton uh, in our, our previous name and previous uh, brand, but we're now uh, changed to be active fairly recently. Um, we're predominantly funded by Sport England uh, and we're one of kind of over 100 kind of what is now known as system partners to support kind of trying to inspire the country to be moving more. Our work is around kind of, as Brad mentioned, supporting clubs, supporting sports clubs and sport, uh, supporting community organizations within sport and physical activity and outside trying to to help us trying to create a, an active nation um for the clubs that are based in hunts there is also a, a similar organization that covers cambridgeshire and peterborough um, and that organization is called living sport and they do very similar things for us and, and graham will, will mention about them later on um, so as brad mentioned we're going to look uh, at some different funding opportunities that are available for you at this moment in time. And the first one that we're going to mention is Active Together. Um, Active Together is a Sport England fund that is available for clubs and organisations, um, but it's slightly different than just applying uh, for a grant where you'd put in an application form and you would be told kind of, it was successful or not successful. And this is utilising something called crowdfunding that you may or may not have come across before. Um, but there's an opportunity for clubs to get match funded up to £10,000. Um, we've supported a number of clubs and organisations successfully uh, run great crowdfunding campaigns. And uh, we're going to show you kind of more information about that shortly. Now, crowdfunding essentially is uh, a system used 
to generate interest, uh, to generate funds. Um, it's been used in the past to launch new products, um, but now it's being used by Sport England to help support you as a, as a club. And the idea is that you get the crowd, your community that is on your doorstep to, and beyond to, to make donations and to raise a larger amount of money to then go towards a cause or towards your club. The idea is that you've got different rewards that you can source as a club. That might be things that are internal, uh, things that are from maybe club sponsors or from local businesses. The opportunity for you as a, as a cricket club is that you can also utilise your membership as a key way of generating funds. And that's where we've seen lots of success from cricket clubs uh, that have also used when they would be getting their memberships on board, also adding into the crowdfunding reward process and therefore kind of generating a, a really good amount of funding that then can be match funded by Sport England. Um, as you can see on the screen there, there's lots of different rewards and clubs have been creative. Uh, we've seen signed Tom Cruise football shirts. Uh, we've seen MOT vouchers. We've seen fish and chip shop vouchers and all sorts of different things. So that your club can get as creative as you want with kind of the different rewards. They can be as small as one pound all the way up to, as you see there, a shirt sponsorship as well that clubs have, have used in the past. Now, as I mentioned, uh, Sport England will match fund up to £10,000 with the Active Together grant. And what that means is if you can raise £10,000, then Sport England will fund that up to, uh, will match fund that up to £10,000. Um, so if you set yourselves as a club a £20,000 maximum uh, that you'd like to raise, if your club raises 10000 of that, then in theory, Sport England could also match fund that. But with what we've seen with some clubs, um, Sport England sometimes doesn't match fund that up to 50%. They sometimes might drop that down to 40 or even 30%, depending on the audiences or the projects that they're uh, that you're trying to get funded. But again, working with us as Be Active, we can kind of help support kind of what those campaigns can be. In theory, if the Sport England funded uh, said they would match fund your crowdfunding campaign by up to 50%. Essentially, you would set yourselves a target uh, and you would get lots of different rewards and you would start your crowdfunding campaign. What would then happen is that Sport England will also be notified that you're trying to, to fund it. It's something you need to activate in the background. But essentially, once you start crowdfunding, once you reach 25%, of the overall funds. So if you're aiming for £20,000, once you'd raised £5,000, plus the required unique supporters, which is kind of on the table on the right hand side. So if it was £20,000, you you'd need to get 100 unique uh, supporters of the crowdfunding campaign, then Sport England would activate the extra funding. Uh, so then they give you that cash boost. And then the idea is that you've got just 25% left and Sport England would ask you to try and raise that final amount for them to then give you the funding, which would then be secured. What we've then seen is once clubs reach their 100% target, including the, the match funding from Sport England, clubs can enable a stretch target. And that's where any additional funding on top of your initial target that is fundraised, the club also gets to keep on top of the, the original amount as well. And that's where we've seen clubs raise 22, 25,000 pounds in, in some cases. Now, as you can see on here, here is a, a few examples of, of different um, projects that have been supported through the Active Together Fund. Uh, and as you can see on the screen, there's lots of cricket clubs that have utilised this funding. So after tonight if this is something that you're interested in you can head to the active together crowdfunding page just put it into google and you can see all the projects past and present and um, that clubs are trying to raise of course there's other sports in there as well but you can look at what other cricket clubs have done um, and how they've used this crowdfunding campaign to raise much needed funds for their club one club that 
uh, we've worked with within Bedfordshire uh, is Luton Town and Indians Cricket Club. And back in 2000, uh, 2021, I was, I was going to say 2001 then, uh, back in 2021, uh, they were looking to raise some funds for their club uh, to help them kind of overcome the, the COVID shortfall that was felt by the club. And through their hard work, they were able to raise £21,155, which is an absolutely incredible amount. Uh, and that was raised in just 56 days. So it shows when you've got a club that wants to work together, it's got a strong sense of community, you can really fund raise some really serious amounts of money that is much needed by lots of clubs. Some other examples we've seen uh, across the county, uh, we've seen swimming clubs raise over £23,000. Uh, we've seen indoor bowls clubs raise over £24,000. We've seen football clubs raise good amounts as well. So what we're trying to show is that there is a range of sports clubs and a range of kind of demographics that can really tap into this crowdfunding campaign and really secure much needed funds for your club. Um, if I just go back two seconds, what um, what we'd also ask is that if you're looking for support with this, and this is something that you're uh, trying to to kind of raise funds for your club, then please reach out to us at Be Active. And between myself and Graham, there's an awful lot of experience. And um, we've seen lots of cricket clubs raise lots of different amounts of funds uh, for lots of different reasons. There's been projects around increasing participation with women and girls. We've seen clubs looking at regenerating their uh, changing room facilities and, and making them more accessible. And we've also seen clubs raise vital money for equipment and other kind of costs that are associated with running the club. So if you think that this might be a good idea, please reach out to us and we'll be more than, than happy to help. Graham, I'll hand over to you. I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to add about crowdfunding before we move on to the next fund. Yeah, thanks, Jonathan, and good evening, everybody. Um, yeah, there's a couple of points I would make, really. Um, one is I would just reiterate the point that, that Jonathan has made. Um, if you're interested, um, then do get in touch with us. It's a great opportunity for you to uh, set up a crowdfunding scheme and use your annual memberships as eligible donations. Um, I would imagine the vast majority of you um, secure your memberships in, um, in April next year, April, May time. Um, so if you're going to run a crowdfunding scheme at that time, uh, you really need to start planning it in January. So it does take a little bit of time to put together. Where we've seen it work really well um, is when sort of a group of three or four people have come together um, from a club and 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 shared out the um, the work that needs to be done. Uh, a lot of time is generally spent around securing the rewards. So though there'll be some rewards that you can create within your own club, for example, as Jonathan said, the the annual memberships and the social memberships and perhaps, uh, you know, bar tokens and things like that. Um, actually, you do need to have a mix of not just cricket, but also um, stuff from 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 outside of cricket that's going to attract donations from others who might not be interested in cricket, but they might be interested in uh, a meal in a restaurant or um, uh, a discount on their MOT or servicing or uh, um, a discount on a haircut uh, for for it, for example. So um, you do need to spend a little bit of time talking to your local businesses actually um, and getting donations from them. But it's a great way also for them to to actually promote their their business and organisation locally as well as supporting their local community sports club. So, um, yeah, if you if you're interested, talk to us and think about getting started in terms of the planning process in January um, if you're going to be collecting in memberships in sort of March, April, early May time. Um, yeah, uh, do you want to go on to the next um, slide? Yeah, I'll just talk very briefly about one of the other Sport England funds um, that we wanted to highlight for you um, tonight, and that's the Small Grant Fund. Now, this particular fund has been around for quite a long time now, for, for many, many years actually. 
um, but back in 2023, the amount available through this grant was increased from £10,000 to £15,000. Um, and that's available to, to, to clubs in either one application or, or multiple applications uh, over, a, over, a, over a 12 month period, as long as the aggregate doesn't exceed £15,000. But significantly, the fund closes on the 31st of March next year. So if you're interested in uh, pursuing this grant funding opportunity, then again, you probably need to get your act together early in the new year to get this application in. Um, it very much focuses on um, and wants to support applications that support the least physically active to be active. So if you're looking to secure new memberships, um, if you're looking to set up a women and girls section, for example, or to invest in, in, in developing your women and girls section, then this could be um, uh, quite an attractive fund for you, actually. And we have seen clubs be successful, cricket clubs be successful in securing investment through this fund uh, for, for, for women and girls, growing the women and girls game. But not exclusively, if you're looking to attract people in from you know, your local communities, your culturally diverse communities, uh, those perhaps living in areas of high deprivation who might struggle to, 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 to buy their own equipment and their own clothing uh, to help support with stuff like that, um, then, then I would certainly uh, consider this, this, this grant application worth looking at. They particularly want to support applications um, from clubs that are either based in IMD areas one to three and by that I mean index of multiple deprivation areas one to three so the poorest areas but if your club isn't uh, based in that and you can you can find that out by just doing a, a simple sort of postcode um, inquiry uh, on this on the Sporting and Small Grant website if you have members who actually live in those in those areas then again what we've seen is they've been quite happy to support applications from clubs that don't they're not situated in areas one to three, but actually do have members who 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 live in these and come from these areas. Um, so we again we can help you with that and help to put to that that case together to get support. Um, one of the other things that we're seeing a lot more of as well is, and, and and Brad might touch on this in terms of the county grant, is this fund in particular is supported by by King Charles, and he's very keen to. Um, support things that are environmentally sustainable. So if you're looking to invest in um, some infrastructure, so you know, it, it, it might be um, in, in, in your heating, in your energy supply, uh, it might be rainwater efficiency, um, you know, rain harvesting, um, as a relatively small amount of capital investment to improve the quality of facilities that you have on site, that are also going to contribute significantly towards environment, making it more environmentally sustainable, then again, this grant may well be of interest to you. Um, also, um, I don't know whether we've got anybody in the room who's, whose club has suffered from, from the flooding and storm damage that we've seen over the last couple of months. Um, if you are, um, then again, um, please use this fund to uh, to submit an application for help and support the specific guidance around that agenda um, on the on the website. Um, I'll hand over now I think to Brad who will talk a little bit about the um, the county grant options that are available. Thanks Graham. <clears throat> yeah so some of you may well have come across this it's the ECB's kind of current funding stream that they've got for clubs in the shape of the uh, the county grant uh, and it it primarily uh, looks to fund across three themes which is either around creating welcome environments uh, at your club improving your uh, your facilities or your your, your your playing facilities and also looking as Graham Jordan kind of mentioned around tackling climate change you can apply between one and ten thousand pounds uh, you can't apply for any projects that are over a hundred thousand pounds. That's that's that that's not eligible for this fund. Uh, we get uh, a devolved budget from the ECB, and that that budget for 2024 has yet to be yet to be confirmed. So uh, hopefully that will kind of come through to us early in the new year, so we know what sort of kind of budget that we've got uh, to invest in. One of the areas that is a slight shift uh, from previous years. 
So 2024 will be the county grant's third uh, uh, funding uh, fu funding year. And what's happened in the past is is if a club has been eligible for a fund uh, and they then they've met the criteria, then we've very much looked to support them with that. So whilst we're not kind of moving away from that too much, you may or may not be aware that over the last year, uh, us ourselves at Cricket East been going over our own county wide facility strategy. Uh, all county boards up and down the country have been charged by the ECB to to put a uh, a 10 year facility strategy strategy in place uh, and clubs were consulted oh, kind of back end of or well, the start of this year uh, from from memory and that is in its final phases of kind of sign off and approval by the ECB so subject to the outcomes of our own facility strategy there will be some priorities that we will look to try and implement so the projects that clubs are looking to uh, to work on investing will need to marry up with our priorities. So as and when our priorities and our outcomes are known once the once this uh, facility strategy has been has been uh, signed off, we will obviously make all the clubs aware of what uh, kind of like our direction of travel is. So essentially what I'm saying is if you are thinking of looking to apply for this, uh, please, please do get in touch with us before you do, so that obviously we can make sure that uh, you know we're all kind of seeing it from the same hymn sheet, so to speak. But the fund will be back open for clubs to apply for from from first of Feb of next year. But that that doesn't stop you thinking about uh, you know a project now. But it's going to be kind of hard for us to to kind of give you a a definitive it's going to be it's got a, it's got half a chance of being successful until we know what our uh, county-wide uh, uh, outcomes and priorities are okay Jonathan just next slide just one more slide on this so the three themes are creating welcome environments uh, and that is very much geared towards clubs that are running all stars dynamos those those kind of ECB national products and or your uh, traditional junior section also the clubs that are currently involved with women and girls cricket and or disability and the sort of things that that will fund there will be improving your social space toilet facilities uh dig digitalizing your club catering etc cetera, etc cetera. theme two is is uh around enhancing your your playing opportunities now this is specifically relating to clubs that are currently involved with competitive hardball women's and or girls cricket and or disability so the sort of things that that will be uh, kind of open up doors will be your don't have pitches your outdoor net facilities or enhancing your, your your changing facilities but that theme too is very much geared around disability cricket and or women and girls and then the third one which is uh, tackling climate change now this is open to all clubs so whether it's your your big traditional kind of town clubs or your smaller you know kind of village clubs that only have kind of you know one side at the weekend uh, all are eligible uh, to look to apply for this and it's looking at kind of preventing uh flood drought uh, putting some you know kind of uh, measures in in in, in place on that uh, energy saving so boilers solar panels etc cetera, etc cetera, as well as water management so all of those th three themes are uh, I've just mentioned there. There are obviously some kind of criteria and eligibility. One is obviously having making sure that you've got security of tenure on, on site. We do have the 2023 club guidance notes, but I'll be reluctant to share them with you just yet because we are getting some some 2024 ones coming down. So as and when the 2024 club guidance notes <laughs> are released and when we know when our uh, county wide uh, priorities are, I will share that with you uh, for you to digest hopefully early very early in, in the new year but just like the stress if you are thinking of uh looking to apply for one of these it is definitely worth just picking up the phone or, or sending me an email and we can discuss it further okay that's that's the county grant done also there's just a question that's come in uh let's see if i can answer that now almost at the end so Lorraine, theme two, county grant fund, do women and girls? Yes. So uh, yes, they have to play competitive hardball cricket. So that is the uh, 
that is the criteria so that you can't be you can't apply for that theme too if you are planning on entering a a hardball league for the 2024 season you have to evidence that you are currently or have played some some competitive hardball cricket does that answer your question yeah, so the girls do play hardball, but the ladies aren't playing too. So the girls have already had a year of hardball. Right. So would that, yeah, so would that be okay? Yep, so that would, yep. so yep, so yep, yep, yep. So it's it's kind of women and all girls. Yeah, so our, our women, we're all a bit wussy still. We're, we're not up for the hardball <laughs> quite yet. No, that's fine, that's fine. Does, does that answer your question though? Is that okay? It does, yep, perfect. Thank you. Brilliant. Okay, and I think, uh, is it Graham, you're just going to kind of, Finish off with some some kind of generic funding sources for both beds and hunts. So I'll, I'll hand back over to Graham. Yeah, thanks very much, Brad. Um, yeah, this is not an exhaustive list, list, but it does give some examples of some of the other funding opportunities available to you. Um, we'll start with Bedfordshire, which um, sort of the, the, these these are opportunities that um, that I'm certainly more familiar with, and and so is Jonathan. Uh, but our our friends and colleagues in living sport will be more familiar with the with the with the Huntington and Cambridgeshire and Peterborough opportunities. Um, I think having good relationships with uh, your ward councillor um, or your parish councillor or both um, is 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 really important. Actually, um, get to know them. They will have their own their own funds more often than not. Uh, for example, in Central Bedfordshire. You've got uh, each, each ward councillor has a has a has a funding pot um, for distribution out to to community causes within their within their ward area. Uh, I think they've got around about two thousand pounds a year, and we've seen a number of sports clubs actually benefit from that, where they've where they've built and developed uh, good personal relationships with with their councillors. Same with parish councils, and also with town councils as well. Um, you know, Luton do run uh, schemes that are specific. They're, they're run by the uh, by the borough council. Uh, there's one that's just come to an end at the present point in time. As do Bedford from time to time. So, get to know your 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 ward councillor, your town councillor, your parish councillor. Um, chances are they'll have some funds, not big funds, but they'll have some funds that you can tap into. And I'm sure that's the case also across um, uh, Cambridgeshire, Peterborough, and, and Hunts. Uh, there are some um, local trust funds in, in Bedfordshire uh, that we know have supported sports clubs, um, community sports clubs and cricket clubs in the past um, and continue to do so, actually. And I've just I've just given some examples here. The Wixom Tree Trust, um, particularly keen to support uh, projects across Bedfordshire. And there's up to £10,000 worth of funding available through through that fund. They generally don't fund more than 10% of annual turnover. Um, so if your if your annual turnover is £20,000, then you're probably not going to get more than £2,000 from them. Uh, but £2,000 is still a significant sum of money if you're only turning over 20000 quid in a 12-month period. That's the, um, the Whitbread Family um, uh, Fund. And I think many of you will be familiar with Salville Park, which... Uh, uh, sort of sits in the grounds of um, uh, the Whitbread family home, so um, there is certainly a love for cricket within that family, and we've seen them we've seen them support a number of cricket clubs in the past. So definitely worth making a a, a bid to them. Uh, the Steel Family Trust, um, we know that they support projects across Bedfordshire, but, but they particularly like to invest in Luton. Um, and again, there's up to £25,000 uh, available through the various different funds, and sometimes they make more available for a specific cause. Um, they have changed their rules recently, actually, um, and that's generally only going to be available now for some of the bigger clubs um, across um, across our, across Bedfordshire. Um, the sort of the minimum uh, annual turnover that they will look to support is, is, is £50,000. So I know some of our bigger clubs will be will be making that, um, that generating that sort of income, but a large number won't be. Um, but if you are one of the larger clubs and you think you might be eligible, then certainly give them a, a look. We know they've supported cricket clubs locally in the past. Uh, the Bevature and Luton Community Foundation. Um, this is the London Luton Airport Fund. 
Um, so they certainly provide support um, across Bedfordshire, you know, Luton, uh, Central Bedfordshire and Bedford Borough. Um, different types of funds, different amounts vary, but there's generally up to £10,000 available through the community funds that are made available. Um, and they will they will fund small value capital as well as as well as revenue expenditure. Um, and the focus tends to be very much around sort of like the health and wellbeing agenda um, and supporting um, uh, also opportunities to develop people and skills. So you know, developing coaches and young leaders as well. So if you've got projects that um, are going to tick those agendas, then again, they're a funder that are definitely worth looking at. Um, Jonathan, can you flick on to the next one? Yeah, just continuing on with uh, local trust funds, um, the Gale Trust, Bedford and surrounding area, uh, much smaller, um, generally up to £2,000 available. But again, we know that they support um, uh, cricket clubs and sports clubs. So if you're in the Bedford and surrounding area, that northern end of central Bedfordshire, then um, definitely worth a look. The Harbour Trust um, is, is, is a Bedford Borough local authority area, to, area fund um, and they do a small grant and a large grant. Um, probably worth just picking up the phone to them first if you've got a project that you think might be of interest to them and just talking it through with them. They're, doing, they're very, very helpful actually over the phone um, in terms of an initial sort of discussion and um, um, expression of, of appetite really um, so that you don't go wasting a load of time putting an application together. Uh, landfill tax funding. Uh, this is an area actually where, where Huntingtonshire um, uh, and, and Peterborough, Peterborough and, and Cambridgeshire actually does a bit better than Bedfordshire and we'll touch on that in a minute. Um, but there are some parts of Bedfordshire uh, that can that can access the, the landfill tax funding. It's, it's, it's eligibility is driven by geography, driven by proximity to landfill sites. If you are eligible, you'll probably know that it's generally within 10 miles of a, of a landfill site. And there is up to £100,000 available through a number of these of these funds for, for capital based projects to support facilities. They do have specific rules around the type of legal entities that they support. We know that they support charities. We know that they support um, uh, task, um, uh, uh, sports clubs. Um, but sort of an unincorporated community sports club, um, you know, falls outside of their remit. Um, but they do support town and parish councils um, and local authorities. So, um, you know, if you haven't got security of tenure over a site, but you you you're very very keen on 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 a on a project that actually develops a facility, you could perhaps work in partnership with your um, with your with your council actually who have the security of tenure to to put something together um and then we've 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 seen that there are parish and town council opportunities in Dunstable Langford Biggleswade and Cannington so if you're in those areas um I would certainly have a look at um at that link on there to the centralbevshire.gov website you know this these are opportunities being driven by section 106 funding where they're specifically looking to distribute funding out to local community organizations and good causes um, and there's certainly an opportunity there for sports clubs to benefit um, and then you've got other options available through the cvs uh, bedfordshire website so the link is there um jonathan can you move on yeah so um in terms of Huntingdonshire, Peterborough, Cambridgeshire, um, and this is supported through our, our colleagues at Living Sport. Um, so please do get in touch with them and talk to them about what might potentially be available. Um, I've just been through um, some of the opportunities that we've that, that we've been advised of, and we know that um, that are available um, outside of the traditional sort of sports funding. So there's the McGeorge Capital Fund, which is the, the landfill tax um, fund administered through Grantscape. Lots of areas of, 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 of your part of the world are, are actually eligible that, that aren't eligible to, to Bedfordshire. Um, so there's up to £15,000 to support refurbishment and development of facilities in community spaces costing no more than £100,000. That looks quite an attractive fund to to go for if you fall within the uh, eligibility area. 
Uh, they also have a specific sports fund as well, actually, which is which is administered through the active partnership and there's up to £1,500 available for, for small value improvements and enhancements to facilities. So perhaps something alongside um, an application into the into the county grant scheme that uh, Brad was talking about earlier might work quite well. Um, and then you've got uh, in Huntingdon, the District Council Community Chess Fund um, and Cambridge County Community Foundation provides a range of funding opportunities that sports clubs may be eligible for and the link is there. And also the Huntingdon Freemans Trust as well. Uh, we know have supported uh, education, recreation and leisure. Um, and if you want to know more and other, other opportunities that may be available, then please do get in touch with our colleagues at Living Sport, as I've said. Um, Jonathan, do you want to move on? So finally, we've we've just got a sheet here that um, uh, covers the contact details. So um, obviously Brad and, and Will at Cricket East, myself and Jonathan at Be Active and Sally Gibson at Living Sport for, um, for our friends uh, up in, um, in, in Peterborough, Cambridgeshire and Huntingdonshire. Um, that sort of brings to the end sort of like the formal part of the presentation. Um, but I think we can open things up now, can't we, Brad, to, to any questions or comments? Yeah. Anyone got any <clears throat> any questions or comments? If if you don't, then that's fine. You can you can pick that with us uh after. Not a problem. Okay. Sorry, will you forward these uh, slides by email to us? Yeah, yeah. So I I will get these from uh from Be Active, and I'm sure it's okay if I if I share this with the group. So you, yeah, no problem at all, Bojo. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. I think we'll we'll wrap it up there. Thanks very much again for attending, and and thanks Jonathan and Graham for your time. It was really much appreciated uh, coming along and helping out helping out the cricket side of things. So it uh, is always uh, valuable to get your insight into things. Uh, I will share with the slide. I'll share the slides with you as and when I, I get them in the next day or so. Uh, if you do any question, do have any questions on anything that we've discussed tonight, then hopefully you've got half an idea of who to contact and where to go. Uh, so just leaves me to say, those that are celebrating Christmas, I wish you a, a, a pleasant time over the holiday uh, period uh, and hopefully we'll catch up some point in the new year. Thank you all. Thanks, Thanks Brad. Brad. Thanks, Brad. Take care. Bye. Merry Christmas. See you later. Bye, bye, Jack. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye.